Hey guys, it's Rachel. Today is kind of a really specific video. Um, back in January of 2020, we're throwing back, so just the calm before the COVID storm, I had kind of decided that I wanted to try and read more poetry because I like poetry, but I'm picky about it. And I just kind of, I felt like most of the poetry that I read that I enjoyed was, um, either out of like maybe two poetry collections that I actually own and stuff that I read when I was getting my English degree at my university. And one of the classes that I got to take, one of my favorite classes was advanced poetry writing. And in that class, I mean, it was a writing class, so we were mostly writing, but we did obviously like study a handful of poems along the way to kind of try different stylistic things. And the book I need to get for that class is this one. So the Vintage Book of Contemporary American Poetry, edited by J.D. McClatchy, right? Yeah, McClatchy. Cool name. Um, we barely read anything from this. Like, we only read the tiniest little bit. And so back in January 2020, I felt like the past couple of years, I just really not read much because it had been my first couple of years of teaching. COVID happened during my second year of teaching. That was not a mood. Um, and I just felt like I kind of didn't read very much, which makes perfect sense because your first two years of teaching are trash and a half, even without COVID. It's like really chaotic, I feel. And it's like hard. It was hard for me to just chill and just sit down and read because I just felt like my brain was constantly going. Um, so I wanted to read more in general. And one thing I found, especially because this is before I got my headache medication and I was really struggling with having a headache basically every day. There were just some days where I could not just sit down and even read a chapter and I just wanted to write something short and just focus on that. So I figured that in between books, I would read some poems out of this. And I kind of timed it out that if I read about 30 pages of this book each month, I would be done sometime in 2021 because this is a 600 page anthology. Um, I read the first half in 2020. 2021, I read a ton of novels and I barely made any progress with this. And so by the time I hit the beginning of 2022, I kind of made it a goal that I was going to finish reading through this. And so I feel like this is not a book that most people are going to sit and read cover to cover. I needed it for a class. We only read a certain, like a small selection. I don't know if most people just sit down and read an entire poetry anthology, but I figured, I mean, I already had this book. I knew I liked a couple of the poems that I got to read for class. So I was like, let's just read this sampling. I just kind of figured that contemporary American poetry is stuff that I've kind of liked in the past. This is a sampling of 75 different poets that were considered good enough to be in the collection. I figured that that would be a good start because I don't really read a ton of poetry collections. Um, and I figured that I could, you know, mark up in the book which poets I liked the best and then maybe I would buy their work afterwards. So it was supposed to just kind of help me not only be able to read just small amounts of something in between novels, it was also going to just help me discover more poets that I liked. Um, my favorite that I read for my classes was Sylvia Plath. She's in here. She's bae. Everyone should love Sylvia Plath. If you don't, why not? Like, just kidding. You're allowed to have your own opinion. Um, but I already knew that I loved her. So I'm not going to count her in my total. But the total number out of the 75 poets that I read in this anthology, I discovered 10 that I liked. That being said, I read 65 poets that I was like not super into. Keep in mind, that doesn't mean that I didn't like any other poems. There are plenty of poems that I marked that I really liked from a lot of different authors. It's just the ones, you know, the author sections where I liked quite a few of them. Those are the ones where I marked as like, yes, I want to try this author. And so what I did was like kind of throughout the contents, I just kind of went through, put stars next to stuff that I liked. And I kind of tried to stay engaged with the text like I would for school. Um, and just kind of like marking, just kind of putting marks next to lines that I really liked. And I feel like 
there were times where I regretted committing to this book because like I said, there were definitely, I didn't resonate with every single poem, obviously, or every single author, but I feel like I learned a lot about what I appreciate about poetry. The authors that I enjoyed the most, I wrote them down in a notebook, were Edgar Bowers, Carolyn Kaiser, W.S. Merwin, J. Wright, James Wright, Anne Sexton, Adrian Rich, Mark Strand, Yusuf Kam mm. Komunyaka, Yusuf Komunyaka, maybe, and Lee Young Lee. So those were the 10 that I liked the most. So I did learn that from my whole experience. The other things that I learned along the way were just kind of general characteristics that I enjoy. So first of all, I don't usually prefer longer poems. The keyword is usually, it really just depends on the author. But if it's an author that I'm kind of got neutral feelings toward, chances are I don't want to sit there and like read through a giant epic poem. I feel like that makes sense, right? You wouldn't read a 1000 page book from a fiction author that you thought was kind of just okay. Um, and poetry, you know, a three page poem, yeah, it's three pages, but it's a poem and poem is, poems are so densely packed with their language. And so even a longer poem, every word counts. Every word is going to hold a lot more weight than in a fiction book. Um, one thing that I've always known is that I'm cool with poems with no punctuation. One thing that this book taught me quite early on is that no punctuation is totally fine for me, but I'm really not into authors, whether they use punctuation or not, and their whole poem is a giant run on sentence or like a giant list of stuff. I'm just really not into that. Like if you have like seven semicolons in your poem before you get to a period, what is wrong with you? I hate it. Like, I'm sorry. I just, how do you expect me to actually be able to pay attention throughout that entire thing? Like you got to be doing God's work in that poem, like absolutely killing it, in my opinion, for me to actually be able to stick around that long. And I think overall, this has really shaped my non-academic approach to reading poetry. Because I mean, obviously, when I was getting my degree in my university, I was doing my best to really understand and appreciate each poem and like try to really see which literary devices each author was using and kind of what made that poem good. But like, if you're reading for leisure time, especially if you're trying to read like 600 pages of poetry because you're a complete nerd like I am, you really don't need to spend that much time on each poem. That's kind of, at least I don't feel like I should be doing that. Um, so I guess the rule that I created for myself along the way was like, if I'm not vibing with a poem, I'm not going to strain my brain to try to figure out what's going on in that poem. If I read a poem, I'm not really vibing with it at first. I don't really care, don't really, maybe I don't understand it. But then I get to the end and I was just like, you know what, wow, that actually turned out to be really beautiful. I just don't know what the heck just happened. Then I was always going to go back to revisit that poem right away to kind of look at it in a different way now that I know, okay, this is maybe what it's about. I'm not sure, but I like the way that it sounds. Those are the poems I actually went back to spend more time with. And I think that that's fair because if you're reading for entertainment, if you don't like something, why are you sitting there agonizing over it? I feel like I just, I was afraid that I wasn't giving each poet a fair shot if I wasn't like truly understanding it. But I think with poetry, if you're not on the same wavelength as that author, just forget it. Like that, that, that poet's not for you. So this poetry collection does have kind of a mixture of longer and shorter poems. Um, I will say that there were more long, longer winded ones that I usually cared for. I feel like when I was in my advanced poetry writing class, that was my moment where I finally got to refine my writing skills as a poet. I felt like as a poet, I was kind of all over the place. My style was just honestly not good. And it was just, I didn't have a good style. Like it just wasn't, I didn't know what I was doing. But then that poetry class really helped me. And I felt like I was always gravitating towards writing shorter, tighter poems, not quite, you know, super modern minimalistic, not necessarily like my poetry doesn't do well on Instagram. So it's not really Insta poetry, but you know, it's tighter, but I feel like 
after reading so many long-winded poems in this collection, I feel like some of my poems did start to get a little bit longer. Um, so I think that that's interesting, that I was definitely influenced by consuming all of this content. My writing style was influenced, at least. But yeah, there were some really beautiful ones, some really boring ones. Do I recommend this anthology to you? No. <laughs> I think that my strategy was cool, though. Like, if you want to just read a whole giant poetry anthology to learn about what you like about poems, to get new poems to look for, like, I feel like this did its job. However, I'm not confident. No offense to my professor that picked this out. He's a wonderful man. I feel like this is not the best poetry anthology out there as a whole. I could see why we picked it for the class that I had. I could see why we read the few poems that we read. But like, as many people like on Goodreads have talked about, it's really not a diverse collection at all. And there's kind of no rhyme or reason for like how many pages or how many poems each poet gets. Like there's some authors in here that just get so much time devoted to them. And then other authors where it's like two poems and done. That's why I'm kind of leery about a couple of the poets that I marked that I really liked. Some of them only had a few poems in there. And like, yeah, I like those three poems. But like, if this editor picked 10 poems, would I have liked proportionally a solid amount? Or would it have literally just been those two or three? Don't know. But yeah, I'm really happy that I did this. This did kind of put me in a reading slump to continue finishing. I did not read anything else in February except this book. And then I started another book that I'm about to finish. So this is March. Finally finished. I'm happy I did this. It did kind of take me out of my comfort zone. Do I think I will ever do this again where I have like one collection of shorter works to read in between books? Um, I might. Um, I might not. I think that I'm at least going to do it one more time though because my boyfriend's sister is awesome and she bought me the Underbridge Journals of Sylvia Plath a while ago and my goal was always to read that one in between books once I finished with this one. So I think I'm going to do that one that way but like in the future I don't know. I, I think I would definitely be a little bit more choosy than I was with this. I just kind of picked this because I already had it but I think I would make sure that it's a book that I'm actually like super super interested in because you could still get into a slump I feel like this way because it did get to a point where it's like all right it's been almost it's been like two years I need to finish this book and so it took a while but I got there yeah let me know in the comments if you've ever done something like this or if you've just kind of you know read something in between what you're reading or just kind of studied something casually and kind of wanted to commit yourself like this because I know it's kind of a nerd thing to do but I think it was a cool experiment. I am excited to look up these different poets. I already kind of started to, to kind of see which collections I would be most interested in by them. So I might make that like a whole like thing. I mean, I'm hoping in general that I read more poems and more poetry books. So, you know, as I read them, I'll talk about them more on this channel. I am self publishing um, my own poetry book. It's coming out April 1st. Um, I'm going to have a lot more information about that out soon. Um, I'm probably going to upload a video on the release date and then give you a lot more information then. But if you want to support an indie author, broke teacher, please buy my book April 1st. Bye! I could not finish this video without showing off my New Salem Moon shirt. I think it's cute. I love it when shirts have like stuff on the sleeves. But yeah, I love it.